Hello and welcome to the Exeter Regional Cooperative School District budget season. As you may be aware, the funds in this budget are for the Cooperative Middle School, Exeter High School, Seacoast School of Technology, as well as our adult ed programming. We've worked hard as a group of administrators, budget advisory committee members, and the Cooperative School Board members to develop a budget that is fiscally responsible as well as meets the learning needs of our students. As you watch this video, you'll learn more about how this process has been developed, and we hope that this answers questions you may have and opens the door for a good conversation. My name's Gabby Grossman. I'm a mom to three boys that have participated in the Exeter Cooperative School District. My oldest son, Eli, is 18 now and experiences autism. Because of our experience with the Exeter Cooperative School District, we were able to create a foundation of inclusion and access to community for our family and our oldest son that helped everyone grow. The relationships and connections and activities that we've experienced through the schools has totally enriched our son's life and continues to enrich the peers around him. Hi, I'm Bryce. Bryce. And one thing I love about CMS is the Encore classes. They offer different opportunities for different students, like computer science or art. Like computer science, I'm learning to code and how to make um, slideshows and like graphs, so it helps with projects. and I go by she, her pronouns. And I'm Beatrice Nambla and I also go by she, her pronouns and we're both juniors at Exeter High School. Being part of the student DIJ committee, we've done really cool projects such as this mural um, to instill belonging within the community. And with that, we've also learned personally how to grow as individuals ourselves and also to instill such values and goals within our own community here at Exeter High School. It's really been implementing quite well into the school. We've seen a lot of good feedback from teachers and other students who've said that they have felt more connected to each other and generally more comfortable within the school. My name is Raina Thompson. I'm a sprinter here at Exeter High School uh, for the indoor and outdoor track team. Uh, the thing I love most about uh, Exeter Track and Field is the supportive community and the really great people I get to meet. The coaching staff here has been really awesome and very supported, uh, supportive of uh, my goals and I have loved being a part of Exeter Track and Exeter High School. My name is Molly O'Keefe, and I'm the Director of Finance for SAU 16. The cooperative budget is made up into three sections. Fed funds is the adult education grant, food service is our meal service program, and the general fund, which is the part of the budget that impacts your tax rates. Overall, the proposed FY25 budget is a decrease of 1%, or $693,474. My colleagues will help explain the major changes in the FY25 budget. Hello, my name is Heather Murray, and I am your Human Resource Director for SAU 16. When looking at our personnel budget for this year, all positions are built into the Exeter Region Cooperative School District budget. For those staff represented by a union, their pay, step and track, are dictated by their collective bargaining agreement. Our non-union employees are budgeted to receive a 3% increase. The decrease in paraprofessional support was offset by contracted services. And in addition, five positions were reduced through a retirement incentive. We actually have eight retirees this year, and we are so grateful for their service. Our substitute line has also been decreased based on prior year actuals. And finally, there is a 9.9% .9 increase in the guaranteed maximum rate for health insurance 
and a 4.7% increase in the guaranteed maximum rate for dental insurance. I'm Lisa Morin, the Special Education Director at the high school. I'm going to speak towards the increases in special education. First, you would notice there's an increase in contracted services. This is largely due to the level of specific needs, which require specialists to consult with or for them to provide direct services to our students. Also, we've had to use outside agencies to hire staff in response to the paraeducator shortage. The next line is tuition. This line directly reflects students who are presently in an out-of-district placement. Our transportation costs in general have increased, as well as the need for specialized transportation for many of our students, including the medically fragile. Lastly, ESY, which is our extended school year, are summer services for our students that are provided so we do not run the risk of regression of skills. Two areas in the extra high school budget that I would like to address are the regular ed contracted services line, which entails some changes in how we service our students who are being suspended from school and alternatives to out of school suspension, as well as some sort of restorative justice practices that we're trying to implement at the high school. A second line that, that is showing an increase is our athletics line. And that is due to two particular areas. One, an increase in officials' costs due to paying the mileage and the purchase of a new pole vault landing system uh, for our athletes. The old landing system lasted 24 years, so this is certainly an investment in our future. The $27,139 change designated for classroom supplies within Section 1100 pertains to all general special education supplies. This sum is dedicated to ensuring that our classrooms are equipped with essential supplies that aid in the learning process, including paper, books and works, workbooks, and other consumables. These materials play a crucial role in facilitating a conducive learning environment for our students and educators alike. Next, there's an additional $18,000 designated for professional development and study encompassing both special education and regular education. This increase is an attempt to make up the difference from reduced grant funding from the COVID era. The $207,149 change in technology-related expenses includes the procurement of one-to-one -one Chromebooks and the installation of wireless access points. Investing in technology is integral to our commitment to providing modern and efficient learning tools for our students. In the facilities and maintenance section, we are seeing increases in supplies, services, and utilities due to inflation. At the Tuck Learning Campus, the wheelchair lift to the Michael Morgan Center needs to be replaced to ensure the space is ADA compliant. We also added an equipment replacement line in the budget to replace some equipment used by our grounds and facilities teams. We have a multi-year contract with First Student and the increase for next year is 2.95%. The SAU assessment is the cooperative share of the budget to support the superintendent's office. This is voted on annually by the joint school board. Insurance costs have risen in several areas, and we made the last bond payment for the high school in fiscal year 24. Therefore, there is a sizable decrease in fiscal year 25. In the event the proposed budget does not pass, the school shall operate on a default budget. The default budget freezes the appropriation from the current year, except it is changed by obligations mandated by law, debt service obligations, and it is reduced by one-time spending in the current fiscal year that is not going to reoccur in fiscal year 25. On the ballot, it will list the default and the proposed, this chart details the difference between the two numbers. We have a retirement incentive to be paid out in fiscal year 25. Non-union salaries and benefits cannot be included in the default. The three unions in the cooperative have collective bargaining agreements, so those increases are included in the default. Increases in technology, athletics, curriculum, professional development, contracted services, 
and classroom supplies are not included in the default budget. The only increase in facilities that can be included in the default is the cost to repair the wheelchair lift in the Michael Morgan Center as it is an ADA accessibility requirement. Even though we have a multi-year contract with first student, it cannot be included in the default as it is a contract not on the ballot like a collective bargaining agreement is. The Exeter Region Cooperative Budget is split out by enrollment. This chart shows the breakout for each of the SAU 16 towns. Hi, I'm Sawyer Camlin, and I'm proud to be your student representative on the Cooperative School Board. It's an honor to serve as a bridge between the student community and the board, ensuring that the student voices are heard and valued. I'm here to talk about what makes our school district, SAU 16, and Exeter High School so special. We all know how vibrant and dynamic our school system is, from exciting sport teams that bring us together to the diverse array of clubs that we offer. Be it drama, science, or community service, there's something here for everyone. It's the sense of community and involvement that makes our school not just an education institution, but a place where lifelong memories and friendships are made. Now, I want to extend a special invitation to our voters. On February 8th, we will have the deliberative session, a crucial step in our democratic process. The session is an excellent opportunity for you to get informed about the issues and decisions that impact our school community. Your participation is vital. Being an informed voter means understanding the various aspects and viewpoints before making a decision. It's about gathering all the information you need to make the choices that align with your values and aspirations for this school and our community. And don't forget, March 12th is voting day. Your voice matters, and your vote makes a difference. So let's come together, get informed, and contribute to shaping the future of our schools. Thank you for your time and continued support for our education community. See you at the deliberative session.